Time to answer your COVID-19 questions. And joining me tonight to help, respirologist Dr. Samir Gupta. Hello to you, doctor. Uh, so here's question number one. This one's about masks, a familiar topic. Here's the question. I'm seeing more people wearing masks with breathing valves. If they're letting more air through, doesn't that compromise their effectiveness? Absolutely, it does. In fact, those breathing valves are designed to make it more comfortable for the wearer of the mask. They're one-way valves, so they don't allow air in, so they force the wearer to actually breathe through the mask, but they allow air out so that it's easier to breathe out. But what that means is that the air is actually exiting the valve and not the mask, which means that the wearer's droplets are actually getting out there, um, and that defeats the purpose. We talked about using masks mostly to protect other people from our droplets. So if you're wearing one of these masks with the valves, you're not actually protecting other people. Uh, mm -hmm. So we want people to avoid those. Okay, very interesting. Uh, okay, here's question number two. How concerned should we be about being infected via surfaces compared to being around other people? This has been a topic that, that keeps coming up over and over again. Yeah, we've talked about this. And you know, I think the key here is that the, the as we've learned more, our thinking on this has evolved. Uh, you, we've talked about the fact that there's evidence that viruses can be transmitted through surfaces. Other coronaviruses can. There was a study early in this pandemic that showed that this virus can survive on stainless steel and plastic, for example, for up to three days, on cardboard for up to a day. Uh, but that was an artificial lab condition where a very high dose of virus was tested on those surfaces, much higher than you'd expect with a typical cough or sneeze. And what we've seen in the real world is when you look at, for example, contact tracing studies, uh, the vast majority of people who acquire this infection were able to trace that back to a direct contact, usually in an enclosed space for a prolonged period of time. We're just not seeing a lot of contact, surface contact transmission. So it's theoretically possible, but it probably isn't a very important route of transmission for this virus. Hmm. Okay, uh, question number three. I think we have time for one more here. Uh, what more do we know about the potential for long-term damage from COVID-19? We're learning more. Uh, it's still only been six months, so not we don't really know true long-term damage, uh, but we're learning about effects, for example, on the kidneys. So 14% of people in the New York case series who were admitted needed dialysis, and we know that a good chunk of those people will end up on long-term dialysis. So long-term loss of kidney function is a possibility. Uh, heart disease, so people are having heart attacks from clots related to this virus, they'll have long-term heart damage. Lung damage is the big one. Uh, we know that SARS and MERS, for example, caused a lot of scarring or fibrosis in the lungs. We're starting to see that with this virus. We're expecting a lot of people who were really sick, and for example, in the ICU and on a ventilator, to have that kind of damage. Uh, we're also hearing about long-term neurologic consequences. Some people are getting strokes when they're very sick with this virus. Uh, and even things like loss of sense of smell, in some cases, has persisted for quite some time. So. Mm -hmm. We're learning more and more. Probably the people who are sickest with the virus are the ones who are at risk for long-term consequences. And, and, and quickly, do, do we know to what extent age plays a factor there? I mean, because we're talking about other complicating factors, is it that predominantly older people are more likely to, be, to, to suffer long-term damage? I think people who have underlying organ damage to begin with are more likely to suffer long-term damage, and that goes with age. And also people who have more severe infection, which also goes with age. So age is likely going to be a predictor of some of these long-term consequences on that basis alone. Okay. Hey, Dr. Samir Gupta, always good to talk to you. Thanks so much. And you take care.